I'd like to let you know one thing. Sometimes we are all weak. Every single one of us are all trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of us have succeeded in dealing with the external part before the internal part. Some of us have succeeded in dealing with the internal part before the external part. Some of us have succeeded in dealing with both of them together quite quickly and some of them a little bit slowly. But we're all in the same boat. Don't we all want Jannah, Paradise, every single one of us? And inshallah we get it there, inshallah. May Allah grant us all Jannah, inshallah, every single one of us. So it's a struggle. Don't judge a book by the cover. We've heard that so many times. The problem with us, you see someone this guy here is dressed in shorts. Mm, that thought has rendered you worse than him. Amazing. That thought has rendered you worse than him because he might be so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't know. He might have a single deed that is far better than all the deeds you've ever engaged in. Amazing. He might have helped someone or she for that matter. Might have assisted someone or might have got up for the head to who knows? And you might never have. You might have missed your fetter so many times. Who knows? She might not be externally so appearing Muslim, but she might be regular with her salah, and you might not be. Who knows? She might never have hurt a fellow Muslim ever. And you, with a beard from here to the ground and dragging five meters later, might have actually harmed everybody around you. Believe me. So to judge people and to, to rule on people in Islam is absolutely forbidden. And those who do it are astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. What was Shaytan's crime? And I like to say this every time because it's so important. Shaytan said, Ana minho, I am better than him. That's it. The minute he said, I'm better than him, it rendered him worse than everybody put together. And he was kicked out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of the mercy of Allah. So if you are to judge someone and to start thinking for a moment, in any way, when it comes to spirituality and religion, that I am better, I am better. Automatically, you are asking for the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend on you. And you know what? It's like a person, Allah says, In Surah Al-Kahf, towards the end, Allah says, Should I inform you of those who have the lowest of deeds? Those who do good deeds seemingly, they think they're doing good and yet, and yet it's all bad, it's all evil. Why? Because their hearts are not clean. They, they, are, they think what they are on is correct and it's not correct. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from amongst us. So it's a struggle. All of us are struggling. Another example I like to give is the example of a motor vehicle. And it's important, it's, it's important we understand it, especially on campus here. We have the, the M6, I'm not going to say M1 because it's a little bit busy and you get traffic jams. Say the M6, you're driving, you're driving with the latest Mercedes, mashallah. And a person moves next to you with a registration plate of 1980. And he's got a vehicle that's no longer in existence. Some form of a Vauxhall, I don't know, whatever, you can think about it. And you zoom past him at 120 miles an hour. And he's moving at 60 with a bit of a bump. You look at him and you laugh, I've got a better vehicle. Don't worry, I'm going to get there before him. And suddenly, pop, and the tire bursts. What happened? Or suddenly, something went wrong, a little accident. And next thing, you were pulled off by the police. For what? For speeding. And this guy then, one hour later, he passes you and he says, Hey guy, how are you doing? You alright? And he carries on. Amazing. Who got to the destination first? The man who thought he was in a better vehicle? No. He might have been in a better vehicle, but he was stopped. Something went wrong. He had a puncture, for example, and he was stopped. And the other one, whom he thought was in a lower vehicle, had actually crossed and got to the destination before him. So if we take this example and put it into our spirituality, some of us might be driving a spiritual Mercedes Benz. And we're moving on the highway towards Jannah. And we have a puncture, some form of a spiritual breakdown in the process. And we were laughing at those whom we thought were in spiritual voxels, for example. And we looked at them on that highway going to Jannah. And then suddenly they zoomed past us when we get to Jannah. But you've been here before me. What are you doing? I had the man. Come on, I had the beard from here. Ten meters. Come on, man. I'm supposed to have been there before you. That's not how Allah prays. Allah Akbar. So let's understand this. Spirituality is something that should grow. 
And the way it grows is to respect others and respect their spirituality. That is why in Islam there is no odometer or there is no tag on my forehead and yours saying, right, this person is moving at this spiritual speed or this person is this holy. Imagine if holiness was, was a figure and it stopped at 100 and everyone 5, 10, 15, 12, 14, 16, what would happen? Allahu Akbar. There is nothing of that nature. It is kept hidden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah ta'ala la yunduru ila suwarikum wa la ila islamikum, wa lakin yunduru ila gulubikum wa a'malikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your outer, how beautiful you are, how, how wealthy you are, and so on. He looks at your deeds, the inside. Yes, it's a struggle. Everyone should try and get closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshaAllah. If, if we see someone doing something wrong, firstly, we should ask ourselves, what am I doing that's wrong? You should help them by encouraging them positively. Don't doom someone to the degree that they go away from deal because of you.